Beloved, we have come together in the presence of God to witness and bless the joining together of this man and this woman in holy matrimony. The bond and covenant of marriage was established by God in creation, and our Lord Jesus Christ adorned this manner of life by his presence and first miracle at a wedding in Cana of Galilee. It signifies to us the mystery of the union between Christ and his church, and Holy Scripture commends it to be honored among all people. The union of husband and wife in heart, body, and mind is intended by God for their mutual joy, for the help and comfort given one another in prosperity and in adversity, and when it is God's will for the procreation of children and their nurture in the knowledge and love of the Lord. Therefore, marriage is not to be entered into unadvisedly or lightly, but reverently, deliberately, and in accordance with the purposes for which it was instituted by God. Into this holy union, Leah Ann Walker and John D. Gorrell now come to be joined. If any of you can show just cause why they may not lawfully be married, speak now, or else forever hold your peace. I require and charge you both here in the presence of God that if either of you know any reason why you may not be united in marriage lawfully and in accordance with God's word, you do now confess it. Leah, will you have this man to be your husband, to live together in the covenant of marriage? Will you love him, comfort him, honor and keep him in sickness and in health? and forsaking all others, be faithful to him as long as you both shall live? I will. John, will you have this woman to be your wife, to live together in the covenant of marriage? Will you love her, comfort her, honor and keep her in sickness and in health, and forsaking all others, be faithful to her as long as you both shall live? I will. Congregation, will all of you witnessing these promises do all in your power to uphold these two persons in their marriage? You say, we will. We will. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh, gracious and ever-living God, you have created us male and female in your image. Look mercifully upon this man and this woman who come to you seeking your blessing and assist them with your grace, that with true fidelity and steadfast love they may honor and keep the promises and vows they make. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of the scripture. Dad, you can kiss her goodbye. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Love is patient, love is kind, love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way, it is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. 
love never ends. But as for prophecies, they will come to an end. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will come to an end. For we know only in part, and we prophesy only in part. But when the complete comes, the partial will come to an end. When I was a child, I spoke like a child, I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then we will see face to face. Now I know only in part, then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. And now, faith, hope, and love abide, these three, and the greatest of these is love. The second reading is from Colossians 3, 12 through 19. As God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Bear with one another, and if anyone has a complaint against another, forgive each other, just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in the one body. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Teach and admonish one another in all wisdom. And with gratitude in your hearts, sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs to God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Wives, be subject to your husbands as is fitting in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives and never treat them harshly. The word of the Lord. Please stand for the reading of the Gospel. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said to his disciples, As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Congregation, you may be seated. Leah and J.D., a number of years ago, many years ago in fact, I went and visited an elderly couple that had been married 65 years. Uh, They were seated on a little porch swing on their front porch, seated close together, holding hands. And I was a pretty new priest, and I asked them, what what did you do? How, How could you be happy for 65 years together? Tell me something that I can share with these young couples. And first, the husband looked at the wife with a smile, and he he elbowed her a little and said, well, I just had to learn two words, yes, dear. (laughs) But then seriously, he said, 
Having a successful marriage involves understanding what love really is. And most of our American culture is confused about love. We think that love is a feeling. That's why a lot of our celebrities and movie stars will get married and you'll see they get divorced three months later, right? Because they think that being in love means having some kind of a feeling. They get it confused with attraction or warmth or happiness. And feelings come and go. They're like the weather. Look at the weather, right? Feelings come and go in a marriage just like storms of life will come and go. But I've gotten to know you two, and you have a very deep commitment and good hearts. You love your families, and you enter this marriage with your eyes wide open, and both of you find strength in the other one, which is a really, really good sign. And I was so impressed with this hurricane coming and how you two remained calm and cool. And you said, it's going to be fine. And it was fine. Look at this. Isn't it a miracle, everybody? Look at the weather. It's the same in life. Storms are going to come up. Who knows what will happen to you as you live your lives together. But remember that love is not a feeling. It's a choice. Love is actually something that you do, not something that you feel. When you wake up every morning, I want you to remember the vows that you actually took in this marriage sacrament. You didn't vow for the other person to make you happy for the rest of your life. That's not what you said. You took a vow to honor your spouse for the rest of your life. You vowed to honor your spouse. It has nothing to do with how you feel. St. Paul, in his letter to the Colossians, actually talks about love like a cloak, that it's something that you put on, you choose to put it on every day, and to put your spouse above everyone. God, my spouse, and then everyone else. And if you do that, if you do that, your love will grow deeper and deeper, and it will become more like God's love. You know, one of the greatest things about marriage is I think it teaches us about God. Because as we learn to love another human being through thick and thin, we actually grow closer to God. There was an old priest friend of mine who said he thought that when we got to heaven, there would only be one question asked of us, and it wouldn't be like, what have you done for a living, or how much money did you make, or anything like that, that the only question asked of us would be, how have you loved? How have you loved? So I really believe that I may not be around, but one day you two will be seated together on some kind of a little bench after 65 years, and you'll be remembering this day and the miracle of how the hurricane didn't happen. And you'll remember the vows that you took and the way that you've lived up to them. Amen. So are you two ready to do this thing? Okay. Leah, hand over your bouquet. You're going to come up here. There you go. Perfect. Turn and face one another. Maybe I want you to take one of the pillows and not dance. Look at Leah. Why don't you take one of the pillows? In the name of God. In the name of God. I, JD. I, JD. Take you, Leah. Take you, Leah. To be my wife. To be my wife. Have and to, hold to have and to hold from this day forward, from this day forward for, better or for, worse, for better or for worse, for richer and for, for poorer, in sickness and in health, in sickness and in health to, love and to, cherish, to love and to cherish until we are parted by death. Until we are parted by death. This is my 
This is my solemn vow. In the name of God, I, Leah, take you, John, to be my husband, to have and to hold from this day forward, for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish until we are parted by death. This is my solemn vow. Best man, can I have the rings? Bless, O oh Lord, these rings to be signs of the vows by which this man and this woman have bound themselves to each other through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs> Leah, I give you this ring as a symbol of my vow. As a symbol of my vow. And with all that I am, and with all that I am, and all that I have, and all that I, have I, honor you. I honor you. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Father and, of the Son, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And of the Holy Spirit. John, I give you this ring as a symbol of my vow. And with all that I am, and all that I have, I honor you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Now that John and Leah have given themselves to each other by solemn vows, with the joining of hands and the giving and receiving of rings, I pronounce that they are husband and wife in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Those whom God has joined together, let no one put asunder. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal God, creator and preserver of all life, author of salvation and giver of all grace, look with favor upon the world you have made and for which your son gave his life, and especially upon this man and this woman whom you make one flesh in holy matrimony. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Give them wisdom and devotion in their ordering of their common life, that each may be to the other a strength in need, a counselor in perplexity, a comfort in sorrow, and a companion in joy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant that their wills may be so knit together in your will and their spirits in your spirit that they may grow in love and peace with you and one another all the days of their life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give them grace when they hurt each other to recognize and acknowledge their fault and to seek each other's forgiveness and yours. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Make their life together a sign of Christ's love to this sinful and broken world that unity may overcome estrangement, forgiveness heal guilt, and joy conquer despair. Lord, in your mercy. Give them such fulfillment of their mutual affection 
that they may reach out in love and concern for others. Lord, in your mercy. Grant that all married persons who have witnessed these vows may find their lives strengthened and their loyalties confirmed. Lord, in your mercy. Grant that the bonds of our common humanity, by which all your children are united one to another and the living to the dead, may be so transformed by your grace that your will may be done on earth as it is in heaven, where, O Father, with your Son and the Holy Spirit, you live and reign in perfect unity, now and forever. Amen. All right, let us kneel for the blessing. Most gracious God, we give you thanks for your tender love in sending Jesus Christ to come among us, to be born of a human mother, and to make the way of the cross to be the way of life. We thank you also for consecrating the union of man and woman in his name. By the power of your Holy Spirit, pour out the abundance of your blessing upon this man and this woman. Defend them from every enemy, Lead them into all peace. Let their love for each other be a seal upon their hearts, a mantle about their shoulders, and a crown upon their foreheads. Bless them in their work and in their companionship, in their sleeping and in their waking, in their joys and in their sorrows, in their life and in their death. Finally, in your mercy, bring them to that table where your saints feast forever in your heavenly home. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God forever and ever. Amen. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, bless, preserve, and keep you. The Lord mercifully with his favor look upon you and fill you with all spiritual benediction and grace that you may faithfully live together in this life and in the age to come have life everlasting. Amen. I can stand you up. Stepping down. There you go. All the way down. There you go. May the peace of the Lord be with all of you. And also with you. JD, you may kiss your bride. (laughs) Ladies and gentlemen, let me present to you Mr. and Mrs. John D. Gorl. (laughs) 